In this video we will see how to use the if tagging element. Simple example will be the following. We will use for example some boolean value, for example is prepayment, and let's say that we have some part in our design that we want to show only if is prepayment is true. Let's say that it is show this if is prepayment is true. And again, to make it easily identifiable here in the layout, I will also use coloring. This time I will color the whole paragraph. So let's say that it will be some light yellow color. We apply the if tagging element in a similar way as a list tagging element. They both need a content and they need to go around the selected content. They will define how that content will behave. In the case of list tagging element, it defines how the content is repeated. In the case of if tagging element, it defines if the content is visible or not. So I have my content. While it is selected, I will click the if tagging element. And here I need to provide a condition based on which this content will be shown or hidden. When the expression which I need to type here is evaluated as true, the content will be visible. If it is evaluated as false, the content will be not visible or hidden. We said we want this simple condition based on this boolean value is prepayment. So I will point to purchase order header is prepayment. Here it is. And because is prepayment is boolean, we can see it based on this icon. Because it is boolean, then this whole expression is already true or false. Then it means there's nothing else I need to do. I can simply say OK. And now the content disappeared. Let's check why. Let's check which value is prepayment has in my sample data. Let's search for it. It is false and that's why this yellow content is hidden. If I modify this to true, this should appear. So it's very simple, particularly if the condition is already a field that is Boolean. Let's see on a little more complicated, well, not complicated, but not really Boolean value. Let's say that based on the delivery terms, which are string value, we want to show or hide the content. So let's say show this if delivery terms are FOB. I will give it another color. Let's say blue this time. And we want this blue paragraph to be shown if delivery terms have value, string value FOB. So we say give me the if tagging element around the selection. I will point again to delivery terms, but I'm not going to double click. I will just single click. This will be a string field. So now I need to compare it to a string value FOB. Let's bring up this expat editor and let's now perform the comparison to string value FOB. So if this equals, now you can use a single quote or a double quote. Expat is forgiving. I will use single quote FOB closing single quote and that's it. Okay. Obviously delivery terms are FOB right now in my data source. So let's check that. So I can modify this value here into something different one. And now the blue content disappears or I can do the following thing. I can switch back back to the original value. But here where I have that if tagging element below, I can say invert and I will get the negative logic of the originally applied one. If tagging element, we can apply to the whole paragraph as we did in these examples. We can apply it to only one word. For example, this one. We can apply it to several paragraphs, so to the whole section in our layout. You can think of it uh, as equivalent of visibility property in SSRS. 
but it's not absolutely the same as visibility property because it cannot be applied to the columns. So we cannot use the if tagging element to show or hide the complete column of our table. If we try to do that while the column is selected, if I click the if tagging element, I will get the error that repeating section controls, if tagging element is one of them, can only be inserted around entire paragraphs or rows. But don't worry, we can still show or hide conditionally. The columns only, we won't use the if tagging element, we will use something else, something that is called visual format overwrite. Let's demonstrate that on the example of this column. And let's say that we want to show this discount column only if there is at least one discount amount higher than zero. For this to work, we must have at least one field tagging element in the column that we want to show or hide, which is okay, because why having a column if we don't have a data in it? So I will use the field tagging element to show these discount amounts. I will bind it to data context and discount amount in the current line and use an to formatting for it. So now, how do we apply this visual format or better said visual format override? Let's click it and let's see what does it offer. You see, this form is called visual format overrides. First, what is visual format? Visual format is what is applied to this uh, table, like it's a uh, background color, foreground color, so the color of the text, uh, type of the font, italic, bold, things like that. And with this, we have a chance to override this visual format that has been configured in Word. I can here specify one or more different visual formats. When you have a dialog like this, that means you can uh, have more than one setting. So I will click this plus, and here I need to specify one override. First, I need to say what will be the target of that override. And as you can see, it can be this table column or a row or a whole table or just the currently selected cell in the table or just the text inside the selected field tagging element. For example, think of uh, scenarios where you want to color the negative uh, values in red color, for example. Let's say that I want to use uh, this table cell for a target. Then here you see what are the possible properties we can overwrite. Foreground color, background color, font size, underline italic, and so on. But if I select that the target is the column, then the only property I can override is the visibility of this column. And now I need only to provide, similar as in the case of if tagging element, I need to provide the condition that when it returns true, the column will be visible, and when it returns false, the column will not be visible. So let's provide the condition. We said we want to base it on the number of lines having this count above zero. So let's open the expression editor. This is a rare situation when we don't want to stay in the current data context because this field is in the context of lines. That's why we are automatically offered data context. But now we don't care about it. We want to go from the top of our data source because we want to see all the lines. So I will double click to see all lines. But remember how we were filtering here saying, give me the lines having quantity above 1000. In a similar way, I now want to filter the lines having discount amount above zero. So I will use again this kind of parentheses and here in the middle I will point to discount amount, double click and give me those lines where discount amount is above zero. This will return the collection of lines having discount amount above zero. In this case, uh, I won't get anything because obviously we don't have any such uh, line. Now, when I get the collection of these lines, count how many of them I have. So obviously it is a function count. It is somewhere here among these. Count of, close it. So if this count, I will get a double and 
If that count is above zero, I will get a Boolean as a result. So this is the expression I want to use. I will say, OK, OK, OK. As we saw previously, all the discount amounts were zero. That's why this column is now hidden. I can make it more interesting and give it some amount like 10% in the first line and now the column will be visible. So that was also how to deal with the visibility of the column and we saw now how to use the if tagging element and also a visual format override to conditionally show or hide different elements of our design. That was presentation of our if tagging element. We finished it. And next we will talk about the group tagging element.